Welcome to Mavero Analysis for Hedgehogs. So today I want to look at four um, disassemblers, decompilers. So as you maybe know, disassemblers are the most commonly used tool for reverse engineers and Mavero analysts. So um, apart from hex editors. Um, so yeah, um, the reason I wanted to look into them is like for quite some time, um, I was thinking on which um, this assembler or decompiler I should use to analyze or showcase analysis of native files. Now I'm only used to IDA Pro from work, so I could have used that one, um, but then um, most people would not be able to afford it. So that's the reason I decided against it and I never got around to trying the um, other free um, disassemblers um, for this purpose. So now I did that and just checked uh, four of them. Um, one of them also either free. So um, either has a free version with stripped functionality. And um, yeah, I, I checked Cutter, I checked Gaidra and I checked Binary Ninja. Now Binary Ninja is not free, but if you are a student, it is very, um, pretty much affordable. So should be an option. If you're not a student, I think it's still a bit too expensive for this kind of purpose, but um, it's, yeah, not so much that you cannot pay it, but uh, yeah. So, okay, let's start with binary ninja first because why not? And this sample, that's like a, a very old, Apparently in old Mavra, it's just a random sample that I grabbed from VirusToto, um, searching for ransom in the um, engine detection. So that's the first one I got and then check those with the sample. All right, so let's open this one. Now um, I can tell you right away with Binary Ninja, the thing that I liked the most is I had really no troubles um, knowing how to use it. Um, mainly, I mean, the f first thing is it uses a similar um, shortcuts as IDA Pro. So um, like I can press spacebar to switch between the uh, um, linear and the graph view. Um, and um, most of the menus, they have really, really easy to understand. Like navigation is easy, finding things is easy. It's everything's kind of logical, um, but also, yeah, it has not as many features it, as um, IDA Pro. So there's not as much stuff to hide in, in, in sub, sub menus. Um, yeah, but in general, it really feels good to use it. It's like quite, a, um, quite neat, the whole look and feel I think is the best from all the um, disassemblers decomprised that I tried. So um, now on this, this um, file here, you can see it has some, and there should be a triage view. Let's check this one, triage summary. Yeah, here it is. So here, um, that's like the, the summary information with some, and I get rid of the console, yeah, with some imports and exports. And you can see here that there are some ordinal imports from MFC 42. Now, the, the I checked the library actually, um, and it's a pretty big library and it exports only by ordinal. What does it mean? So it means that I don't have the, um, information on which uh, functions are called here, which is a bummer because you need to know this to reverse the file. So you kind of need to get um, the info from somewhere. And when I checked the sample in IDA, IDA Pro, um, it was able to identify all of that. Um, so this isn't the case here. And um, yeah. I ended up using a, um, or you can, you can write scripts for um, binary ninja in Python. And I ended up using, um, adding the snippet plugin for it. Like there's a really cool plugin manager. Like it's again, very easy to use. You just choose your plugin, right click install and it's done. Um, 
and with the snippets you can have um, I let's check this one there's a snippet editor the snippet editor is not as good um, it's buggy I had messed up highlighting in between and also what happened in between was uh, I wrote something here I checked my browser clicked in here and then everything I wrote in the meantime was gone um, generally it asks you if if you want to save it but it kind of did not recognize that it should ask me if I want to save it from you know clicking outside of the window um, into another program first so that was a bit um, yeah, the snippet editor is not the best, but um, they have good support. They have Slack channel. You can hop on the Slack channel, ask there if, for support. Um, you can get a lot of snippets um, by executing this script. So when I execute it, yes, it will fill your snippet folder with snippets. Python snippets and you can use them to you know see how things work in general with um, calling their API via Python so yeah this is a snippet I wrote for um, um, to rename all of the symbols so I used the MFC 42 stbtxt from Qatar from from Ritzin so Right. I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English. Ryzen. Um, yeah. So I I grabbed actually their um, their um, database of uh, the ordinals and the functions. So that's what I did and uh, to apply this. So uh, here you see see um, all of the snippets. So you can just you know grab what you need, modify them as you wish, and I think with this as a basic basis it's pretty easy to write um, some code to modify or you know automate some things you need like I did here with um, renaming the ordinal export so okay let's close this um, let's check it it didn't run okay let's run the snippet again oh ah, yeah yeah now now we got it uh, and now it's more clear what this code does. So um, let's go back to the graph. Okay. Yeah, that is the main function right here. And uh, now what you need like there's one thing that's special about binary ninja and that is like this um the intermediate like the decompiler has like several levels you can use and even more advanced levels um let's check this in uh, linear mode now this is the disassembly you know this so then there is low level il that's what low level looks like we have medium level IL. You see it gets smaller and smaller. You get high level IL. Okay. And then the pseudo C. So if you are more used to seeing C, then this would be probably your choice. And then there are some other forms that are more, um, I'm not sure what they do differently, but um, yeah. When I use this, I actually never shows the medium and low level because when I'm not sure about the high level I, I look at the disassembly but um yeah I'm not sure maybe it's just because I'm used to having only like some high level decompiler and the disassembly in IDA Pro so that's just the way I work um, and I maybe there I think there's some use case to that so otherwise it wouldn't be there it's kind of neat I, I kind of like this uh, but I'm not sure how useful it is. So, yeah. Um, so some one thing that I noticed is um, you have here you have calls here, but um, although it knows when you check the high level, it knows the the arguments, um, but it does not tell you that in like in the comments. Uh, so why? 
um, like it would be nice to see here in a comment that which argument this is or which, uh, so um, I usually have to switch or like make make the split view um, to see this. Let's actually do that with the split view. So we can see here in high and here we keep the disassembly. So here you see um, if you look at it side by side, you can see what the arguments are for the functions, um, but you don't see it here in the in the disassembly. You will need to you know figure it out by um, um, knowing the calling conventions. So um, that would be nice to have, and I guess there might be a plugin that does it. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, that's something I miss. Um, now. If you check this uh, function below that, there's a call to stat, and um, stat ham returns like a struct for, um, you know, there's some several um, timing information. So what it actually does is it returns the size. I'm gonna show you now how it looks like in comparison in IDA free, so you know what I mean. Um, let's check out a free. So new, and we open. That one. So, so uh, either free already tells me it cannot find the signature MSM FC two. Um, now Ida Pro was able to um, resolve those ordinals um, that you saw before. Uh, Ida free is not, it seems that it does not ship with those signatures to do that, um, which is a bummer. So again, we are left with <laughs> ordinals without meaning. Um, so let's check the call we went into. So um, that is something, what did happen right now? Fail to display graph mode. Uh, let's get back to main. It recognizes the main. Um, Ida recognizes main. Um, the other one didn't. Um, also, um, why does this happen? That is really odd. Like, <laughs> I, I cannot only assume it's some. Did I press something? Um, that is really odd. I I just clicked here. I did not click on the mode button. No, um, that is something else like this string. It was not visible in binary ninja. No, we call f open with this data, and there is no indication of what this data might be. So I actually need to click, and then I see okay, it's this, and I need to change the type to a C string, and now it shows up as a string rb. Okay, something is wrong here, but that usually doesn't happen. So, <laughs> okay, here, um, Ida immediately recognizes this and mm, adds a comment that this is an, a string. So um, one step less. Um, if I check now the sub function, also you see, you see it adds in the comments all the um, arguments. So you know what this actually is here. So, and if you go into this, you see there's this um, struct. Oh, <laughs> there is a struct and it returns the size. It returns the size of a file um, that, that is being given as an argument. So let's name this get size, right? Um, this is something you do not see in here. It, does not recognize this. Uh, where is it? Here. Um, and you will see Ida is actually the only disassembler that does recognize this struct. Um, so it has like the, the type for it. Um, all right. So um, that's so much for Binary Ninja. So let's try another one. Okay, then um, cutter. Cutter is actually, from the look and feel, it's I think the most similar to Binary Ninja. Uh, cutter is free, so 
you you pay nothing nada um, so let's open this file all right and now we're gonna wait a bit for the auto analysis so here is cutter um, now cutter also does not recognize the main function we started the entry and we need to go from up uh, from you know from the bottom up to find the main function uh, which is this one so um, as you can see the decompiler is a little bit low level uh, low level more low level than the others so um, if you check the it's a bit harder to understand or to, to see what it does from here. Now you can change this to Gaidra decompiler. Um, Gaidra has a good decompiler, um, but the disadvantage here is you cannot rename any variables. There is no support for that yet. Um, what happened? So. Um, so this is not possible and they, I, I really like beautifying the code um, so and the fact that I'm not able to do this is a bit of a bummer for me um, yeah I can do this with the with the other one that's like not so beautiful so that is possible um, good thing is here you actually get the comments on the um, on the parameters but you, and also next good thing is you get um, the actual names of the functions. So um, in this case, like Cutter uh, was the only free disassembler that was able to do that. Um, but it's not perfect. Now compared to IDA Pro, IDA Pro actually told me which operator is used here. Like, yeah, Cutter does not tell me what kind of no, I think that's a constructor. Uh, does not tell me what kind of operator this is. So in here as well. So that's the only thing you need to guess or uh, find out in a different way. So that's missing. But yeah, the only one that actually provides um, the only free one that it provides these. So um, I also want to mention this one was the most buggy. Um, disassembler while I tried it, it just um, crashed one time and one time the windows got messed up and it suddenly called, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it, but the windows really got messed up, it was buggy and I need to restart it to fix it. So, and these were bugs that were not reproducible for me so it's hard to write a bug report on them um yes yeah, so i guess yeah i'm not sure and then this thing with the decompiler yeah i i am actually not sure which one i like the most of the free ones i'm still not sure um so let's let's check gaidra now um so gaidra um first of all I personally do not like the look and feel so much. It feels kind of difficult to use. Um, but then it probably has the most features. I'm not sure. Um, okay. There's like, here's a lot you can configure and change in the menus and stuff is buried in the menus. Uh, so this is like more difficult to get into. Um, but I guess it also has advantages if you can change a lot. So um, yeah, the first one was like, how did I first challenge? How did I, do I open a file in this? Like I have to create a project first and then I have to add a file somehow. This was like, uh, yeah, but I guess once you get used to it, it's fine. Um, so, also with the installation of Gaidra, it wasn't so straightforward because there 
you need to install the um, JDK, so the Java Development Toolkit, but the one that they linked on their installation instructions page um, was too old. So Gaida refused to work with it and the error message um, was like, oh, there's no path variable set. Um, although I did set um, the path variable to the JDK. So it wasn't clear what the cause was. So it took some time to figure out um, how to actually install um, Gaidra in this case because of the, the wrong, that this was the wrong version actually um, on their on their website ins installation instructions. So, um, so yeah, here we got, what happened? Ah, now, now I <laughs> got the sample in my project and I can click on it. Okay. This is a bit, so Gaida now takes its sweet time to analyze. Um, so yes, let's analyze it. And analyze, all right. So what I like about Gaidra is the decompiler and I think we still need to wait a little. No function. Oh, yeah, I I need to go to one to some function. Let's find the entry point. So let's go to this place. Um, also, it wasn't immediately clear to me how to use it. Uh, I guess there's it's just um, too different from Ida Pro. So. Um, that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just more different than the others. I think the others are more like we use the same shortcuts as Ida Pro. Um, and here I didn't get immediately to do the things that I want to do. So it took, took some time to figure out. Um, that is the main function. Right. Can I rename it? Not this way. function, edit label. Oh, that's how I renew it. Okay. Bam. So we are here again. So let's check. You see, uh, and in this case, because it's like the Gaidra decompiler, but in, in Cutter, there's no support to rename variables. But in this case, you can do that. You can rename it um, to value, I don't know what to write. Um, result value, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Gaidra also does not recognize the ordinals and it doesn't even, oh yeah, it does tell me where it comes from, uh, from MSC 42, yeah. But um, again, the only one that was able to recognize it was Cutter, so um, let's, try to find this function. The function should be this one. That is, I'm a little bit confused with the colors, I think. All right, um, yeah. The one where we get back the size, it's also not recognized. Um, like we call start, but it's not recognized that this is um, the size that is being returned um, because it doesn't know the struct that's behind it. So like this is our get size function right here. Um, so that's Gaidra. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I changed the theme. So this is not the default theme. This is uh, inverted colors. Um, the default theme, I think you have seen Gaira before, like you will see it's, it's, it's more um, inverted, it's like uh, bright and with the inverted colors, I have some troubles with the menu above here. I think there are more themes like uh, that look a bit better when you like dark mode. Um, so yeah, you can, can apply other ones. Yeah, but in general, this is not my, my taste. Um, of how it looks. So, 
Um, save, don't save. Okay, so in the end, um, what would I prefer? I, I'm still not sure. I have no idea. Um, like they have all their pros and cons. Um, I really like with Gydra, I can beautify the code. Um, same binary ninja, but binary ninja is probably still not affordable for many people. So this is probably not an option. I'm not sure. Uh, Ida free, I will not use that one because every time I use it, I'm sad uh, that about all the functions that are not there because when I'm at work, I have Ida Pro um, and it makes me sad to use it. So I, I'm i not sure. Uh, I'm also not sure what to recommend to you um, if you're looking for something. Uh, I don't know, try them all. Try them, um, the free ones and see what you like best. Um, I heard several approaches. Some people even use uh, several of these at once, like they check if, uh, um, the disassembly in Gaidra, but then the decompilation in uh, the disassembly in Ida free and the decompilation in Gaidra, and um, they combine the two. Um, yeah, but in the end, it's just a tool. Um, and I'm not sure what I will use in the future. Maybe I will switch between tools. Um, might I might just do that. Um, it doesn't hurt. Happy reversing.